to children on the sacrament of the altar. St. Augustine The duty of giving a sermon, and the care with which we have labored with you, that Christ might be formed in you, compel me to remind you, children, you who have been born again of water and the Holy Ghost, that you are now seeing in a new light this food and drink here present on this table of the Lord, and that you are now perceiving with a new devotion the meaning of this so great and divine sacrament, this noble wondrous medicine, this clean and fitting oblation which is now being offered to God, offered not in an earthly city, Jerusalem, nor in that tabernacle made by Moses, nor in the great temple made by Solomon, which were but shadows of things to come. But, as the prophets foretold, it is being offered up from the rising to the going down of the sun, and through the grace of the New Testament, it is offered to God as a sacrifice of praise. God looks no more for bloody offerings from herds and cattle. Now no more is a sheep or a goat offered at the divine altars. The sacrifice now of our time is the body and blood of the high priest himself. Long ago in the Psalms, it was said of this great high priest, Thou art a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. We read and we keep firmly in mind from the book of Genesis that Melchizedek, the priest of the Most High God, offered a sacrifice of bread and wine when he blessed our father Abraham. Christ our Lord, therefore, who offered for us in his passion what he received by being born of us, made a high priest forever, gave to us this order of sacrifice you now see, namely the sacrifice of his own body and blood. For when he was pierced by a lance, his body gave forth water and blood, by which he was to wash away our sins. Mindful of this grace, and while working out your own salvation, let you with fear and trembling draw near to partake of this altar, for it is God who worketh in you. Acknowledge that in the bread which hung upon the cross, acknowledge in the chalice that which flowed from his side. For these ancient sacrifices of the people of God, in all their number and variety, only prefigured this one true sacrifice that was yet to come. For Christ himself is our sheep, because of the innocence of his pure soul. And likewise, our sacrificial goat, because of his likeness to our sinful flesh. And whatever else was foretold, in various ways, in the sacrifices of the Old Testament, referred to this one sacrifice, which was revealed to us in the New Testament. Let you therefore receive and eat the body of Christ, you who have now become the members of Christ in the body of Christ. Receive and drink the blood of Christ. Let you never be separated from him. Eat that which binds you to him. Drink of this price which he paid for you, and never hold yourselves cheap. As this, when you eat and drink it, is changed into you, so let you be changed into the body of Christ, while you live devoutly and obediently. For he, as the time of his passion was at hand, when he wished to celebrate the Pasch with his disciples, taking bread, he blessed it and said, This is my body which is given for you. In like manner he gave us the blessed chalice, saying, This is my blood of the New Testament, which shall be shed for many unto remission of sins. You will have read this in the Gospel, or you will have heard it read, but you did not know that this Eucharist is the Son. But now, with your hearts made clean, and with a pure conscience, and with your bodies washed in clean water, come ye to him, and be enlightened, and your faces shall not be confounded. For if you receive this worthily, which is of the New Testament, through which you hope for an eternal inheritance, and hold fast to the new commandment, that you love one another, you shall have life in you. For you will be receiving that flesh, of which life itself says, The bread that I will give is my flesh, for the life of the world, and again, unless a man eat of my flesh and drink of my blood, he shall not have life in him. Therefore, having life in him, you will be one body with him. For this sacrament does not give us the body of Christ, that it may then separate us from it. The apostle commemorates that this was foretold in Holy Scripture. They shall be two in one flesh. This, he says, is a great sacrament. But I speak in Christ and the, in the church. And of the same Eucharist, he says in another place, We being many are one bread, one body. 
Begin therefore to receive that which you have begun to be, provided you do not receive it unworthily, so that you shall not eat and drink damnation to yourself. For the apostle says, Whosoever shall eat this bread or drink the chalice of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the, of the blood of the Lord. But let a man prove himself, and so let him eat of the bread and drink of the chalice. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh judgment unto himself, not discerning the body of the Lord. You will receive it worthily if you are careful to avoid the leaven of the evil teaching, so that you remain the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Or if you hold firmly to that leaven which is charity, which a woman took and hid in three measures of meal, until the whole was leavened. For this woman is the wisdom of God, made in mortal flesh through the virgin, which sows, as in three measures, the gospel through the whole earth, which he filled up again after the flood from the three sons of Noah, until the whole should be leavened. This is that whole, which in Greek is called olon, wherein, keeping the bond of peace, you will belong within that whole, which in Greek is called katholos, whence the name Catholic is derived. Turning then to the Lord, let us earnestly pray for both ourselves and for all the people who stand with us in the courts of his house, that he may deign to guard and protect us through Jesus Christ, his Son, our Lord, who with him liveth and reigneth world without end. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.